Hey, what's up Nerdgasm fans? Jerry here, aka Barnacles, and today we're working on the Robo 3D printer again. I know it's been a while, I'm sorry. Life has been crazy, but anyways, right now it has a dependency on my MacBook Pro right here to basically do all of the slicing and all the physical printing. So if anything goes wrong with this computer, it crashes, reboots for updates during a print, I lose it. So I wanted to get a controller for it. So here I have a controller from RepRap Discount, actually purchased through PrintedSolid.com. And what this allows me to do is connect this controller up to here and it'll allow me to put a, uh, put a SD card into the printer with the G-code on it from the slicer and the, and the printer will just print autonomously for hours and hours and hours and I don't have to worry about the computer going offline or hiccuping or causing a problem and you get much better prints. So let's go ahead and unbox this thing, get it installed and try it out. All right guys, here I have the RepRap Discount LCD, the XXL. So this is the really, really big one right here. And uh, I already opened it once, but unfortunately I lost the video footage. I know, total amateur hour, so I'm having to shoot it again. So let me open up the box here. Here's the LCD. It did come in an anti-static pouch with bubble wrap on it. Um, but you can see right here, this is the unit. You flip it around on the back. It says it's a RepRap Discount Smart Controller XXL. And I actually purchased mine from PrintedSolid.com. They actually have them there, and they're in the States, so you can get them really quick. And it also comes with a 4 gigabyte card, which honestly, you're never going to need a bigger card than this because the G-code's relatively small, depending on your print, of course. And it came with some extra pins. I'm not really sure what these are used for yet, but we'll figure them out during the install. Now, this comes with cables and they're a fixed length, so I went ahead and printed out uh, a special holder for this that attaches to the front of the Robo 3D, which I'll show you here in just a moment. And that will allow this to actually sit at a nice position and allow the cables to reach the board. Now, you can't put longer cables on this. It doesn't say why, but I've, I've read in a couple places and here on the box, it says do not change out the length of those cables. So it's very sensitive to that length of cable right here. And then on the side, of course, you have the place to put the smart card. All right, so we've got the electronics, so now we need a home for them. So right here, I'm printing an enclosure that I downloaded off the internet. You can find the link in the description. And I'm also printing some feet for the Robo 3D to raise it up a little bit so that the screen can mount on the front of the printer at an angle and not interfere with the table. And I'm also printing out some cool buttons and stuff for it because it's got to look cool, right? I love that 3D printers upgrade themselves. All right, here we have all of the 3D printed upgrades uh, that I went ahead and printed out for the LCD screen that I just showed you. And it printed it out in multiple pieces. So here's the top piece that'll face towards you on the printer. And then here's the back piece that actually attaches to the printer. It's got two hard points that attach on there. And then here are the feet. These are the feet that'll actually go on the printer that'll jack it up a little bit to make room for the LCD screen. And they had to do that positioning so that the cables would actually reach the main board. Uh, if you look in the description, I'll have a link if you want to print out one of these yourselves, and it's for fixing that it's for fitting the XXL version of that screen. They make a couple different versions, and then of course I printed the buttons out here in red. I didn't have any video of these printing. I'm sorry about that, but these will actually go through the back of this, and then that's your that's your emergency stop button, and then this will go over the controller and allow you to actually control it, and then click the options by pushing in. All right, guys, here we have the finished product. You can see the, the little memory card slot on the side. Now, I did have to do a couple things. Well, the camera was off mainly because I just needed to keep working. Uh, it was a little bit of a trick to get all the screws in um, because the holes were a little too small, uh, so I had to tap them out, and that was just because the 3D printer, when it smashes the first layer down, um, it tends to get squished out a little bit further, so that, I just had to clean that up. And then I just took some nuts and uh, bolts that I had laying around from uh, from my other 3D printer, like just the standard screws that looks like, uh, what are they, size M by, let's see, M3-05X20. I just used those. And uh, some little bolts here that are nylon insert lock nuts, M3-0.5. And I'm sure you could use a whole bunch of other stuff, but I was able to get it all fastened in there. The only thing I did notice about this design was it needed a little clean up here. I just sanded that. That's why that's all smooth right now. I noticed it had no fastener in the corner 
for the LCD, if you look on the back, there's no spot to put a screw through. So there is a little bit of a gap there. So if I want to close that off to put a piece of tape or something on it. Um, I also noticed that I needed to clean up the knob to get it to go on and it still doesn't go down all the way so I'll have to drill it out, use a Dremel and clean it out so it can get in there. But the stop button works good, I just had to clean those holes out. So you know, in a nutshell you do have to clean some of the holes out. And I just noticed that a screw is poking through so I, so I put a screw in there that was a little bit too long. But aside from all that guys, it, uh, it turned out really nice. It's ready to go on the printer. All right, so normally the LCD already has two holes. It has one on the side that you can basically replace the bolt on the plastic with a, with a larger bolt that can go through it and hold it there. And it's got a hole right here that you can actually put a screw down into the deck. Now, I didn't do that. I actually attached mine using Velcro so that I can remove it, like so. And uh, the Velcro works really good. But one thing to mind that I found out after doing the Velcro was that this rail does rub a little bit over the top so I just took a file and worked it down a little bit and it was just because of the extra width added by the velcro but I like having the option to easily take take it off and put it back on without having to remove any hardware so that was just my own little twist now honestly this LCD controller couldn't be any easier to install it actually comes with this already attached it's a little smart adapter on it that already has the two cables going into it and there's only one possible place it can fit and that's on the bottom of the Arduino board. So if you come down here at the bottom, you just slide it on there like a so. Goes right on there. And then I just secured the cables in the same clamp that comes over from the power supply just so they're not dangling. And that's all there is to it. All right guys, she's all hooked up. Now what we gotta do is turn it on. Oh, so far so good. Oh, it's beautiful. So much bigger than the screen on the Ultimaker. Very easy to see. All right, so the XXL controller pretty much takes over a lot of the work that the computer did before. And you have pretty much full control over it, which is really neat. So all you do is you push the button, you, you push the knob. That's how you move between the menu items. You just move the arrow. And I love that it has this big screen. The Ultimaker actually has a really small screen. I love this huge screen because now you can look at it from across the room and see exactly what percentage done your, your, your print is. So you can do some cool stuff, like if you want, you can go into prepare, and you can actually disable the stepper motors. So by disabling the stepper motors, now I can freely move the head back and forth, whereas when the stepper motors are engaged, you can't do that. You can also auto home the machine, so you can calibrate it to start. So you're getting ready to start a print. And there you go. Now you're, you're ready to go there. You can also preheat the print head if you want. You can preheat for PLA or ABS built in. You can also cool it down. So if you're preheating the print head and you want to cool it down, you can do that. Uh, I think I need to update the firmware though. It uh, The stepper motor tends to go just a little too far on my unit. Um, so you can also move the axis. So you can, you can go down here and say what increment, like let's say we want to move it one millimeter. And you can select the X, Y, or Z or the extruder. So like if I want to move the print head up, so now you can see using the controller and just turning the little jog dial, I can move the stepper motors. I can do the same thing for the X and the Y axis. Or Y to move the bed. And it works really well. And all I did was plug this in out of the box, guys. I haven't done anything. I haven't updated the firmware or anything yet. This is just working right out of the box. You can also go to the control screen. And under here, you can control the temperature. So if you start a print and it's running too hot or too cold or you want to adjust it for environmental conditions, you can adjust the, the fan speed, the bed, the nozzle. You can even come down here and set all the minimum and maximums on everything. Literally, you can configure everything with this little controller. Um, you can also go down to motion. And you can also control like how fast it accelerates it, a bunch of set it, calibration settings that you can play with to actually improve your prints. I'm not going to mess around with the default settings that are already programmed into it because I think they're already optimal for this machine. And if you screw something up, you can just go back to restore fail safe and you'll be back in business. But the most important screen is probably the info screen. And that's this one right here, which shows you what the temperature of the head is. It tells you uh, where the current position is of the print head. It tells you the percentage done that it's done with the print and how much time has elapsed. But even better yet, you see this number down here? I can actually speed up and slow down the print. 
So like for instance, if I'm in the room with the printer, I can run it at 130, 140% if I have it calibrated good, but let's say, you know, it's prone to failure and I want to work with it outside, you know, I want it to run overnight, I might want to slow it down. And in that case, I'd turn it down. And I could have it go nice and slow and give me the, the most accurate print possible. But you can actually configure that in real time while it's printing. And then that's the oh shit button, this little button right here. And that's the, if everything goes horribly wrong and the machine's in a bad state, hit that button and it should stop everything. All right, so all you do is you take the SD card right here, put it in the side, slides in just like that, says the card's inserted, push the button, go all the way down, say print from SD, and then select your project, which right now I just have a print test. So we're gonna click that, and right now it's heating up, and once the temperature reaches 220 degrees, the print will start. I should also mention that over here is the bed temperature, so you can see the heated bed temperature and the print head temperature independently. Now usually right before the print starts, I like to clean the print head just to wipe off the little bit of excess. And then also the trick that I use with this is you can calibrate it perfectly, but I like to just manually calibrate it. Once the print starts, I just turn the screws just a little bit to get, to get it just to lay down the perfectly consistency because you want that base layer to really be smashed in. All right, we've reached temperature. Here we go. Now the thing I really like about the controllers is they're completely uninterrupted. So when you have it connected to the computer like I had over here before, what would happen is the computer would hiccup every once in a while and it would, the printer would just stop. And then it would resume and it would stop and it would resume. And the problem was that affects how, the cool, how it's cooling and how the filament's actually being laid down and you don't want that. With the controller like this, it's a continuous smooth print throughout the whole thing. Not a single hiccup will occur. Right now I'm just doing a test print which uh, checks the overhang, how much of an overhang this printer is capable of producing. And then if you notice this, if I turn it down, see how the printer just slowed way down? I can speed it back up to 100. Here we are at 100. And let's say we want to go real fast. Let's see how fast we can, here, let's push it pretty quick. Let's take it to 120%. There take it to 130. See here, it shows us we're 6% done, three minutes into the print. Well, there you have it. The double XL display from RepRap Discount that I picked up from PrintedSolid.com installed and working on the Robo 3D printer. This is a very easy install. It's a very easy upgrade. It's actually a pretty inexpensive component. I would say that this should be like numero uno, number one upgrade that you do for the Robo 3D because the hardest part about printing on this thing has been the dependency on my laptop because I've had it go down and I've lost several prints because it stuttered a whole bunch or it rebooted because of an update or I forgot to plug it in and the battery went dead. That is so infuriating when you lose a print. This thing, butter smooth. You set it and you forget it, right? Hope, hopefully Ron and Popeil don't sue me for saying that. But anyways, guys, I hope this video gave you a nerdgasm. It gave me a huge nerdgasm making it for you guys. I am a huge 3D printing fanatic. I've got another 3D printer on the way. This is getting out of control, guys, but I love it, and I wouldn't change it for the world. So, guys, until next time, now that I got my laptop back, I'm going to go download some porn. <laughs> Did I say porn? I meant old episodes of MacGyver. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also, come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys. 